Welcome to this video on scope of inference. By the end of this video, you should be able to determine when it is appropriate to make inference about a population and when it is appropriate to make an inference about cause and effect. You should also be able to evaluate if a statistical study has been carried out in an ethical manner. So today's scenario is, does listen to music improve GPA? So here are six proposed studies for investigating the question of the day. Suppose that for each of the proposed studies, we found the mean GPA of students who listen to music is significantly higher than the mean GPA of students who did not listen to music. So we, this is, we're going to pretend we did this, these studies, and this is what was found. That mean GPA for students listening to music while studying is higher than mean GPA for students not listening to music. All right, so what kind of conclusions could we make for these studies? So I want you to take up here on the side, write random sample and random assign. Um, I use two different colors because I'm going to be underlining some stuff and that will link it to which one it's talking to. So if you would like to use the different colors, that's the reasoning behind them. Pause the video and come back once you're done. All right, so before we begin, I want to remind you a couple things. So I wrote random sample in red. So this is, I'm asking you, why do we want a random sample? Well, the purpose of random sampling is so we can get a representation of the population. So we want to represent the population. So why random sample? Represent the population. We want to be able to generalize our results from our sample back to the population. That's really the reason why you're doing research or experimentating experimentation on things is you want to be able to find a solution that can then work for a larger number of people. Okay. And then the other thing we want to know, where there's not a lot of extra room on this paper, so I've made the extra room where I could, is we also want to know why random assign. We want to randomly assign. First and foremost is we want to create equal groups. That's our whole purpose. And by creating equal groups, that helps us control for count confounding variables. But the super important parts is we want our groups to be equal, not in numbers, but in their variables, really, to represent the population that they're coming from. And that way, any difference in our results would likely come from the treatment itself. So that's your whole purpose is you want to create equal groups, um, which helps control for confounding variables. That way, any differences in the results in the experiment should be from the treatment. So first thing we want to do is we want to go to our scenarios here and we want to determine if there's been random sampling and random assignment. So let's take a look. So we're going to get all of the students in our statistics class. Is that a random sample? That is not. That is a convenience sample. So we do not have random sampling. And we're going to ask them whether or not they study with the music on and then divide them into groups based on their answer. Is that random assignment? That is not random assignment. Okay. Let's try a second one and I want you to try the rest on your own and we'll come back and talk about the conclusions. Okay, select a random sample of seniors from your school to participate. Is that a random sample? Well, yes, because it literally says the word random right there. So, yes. Okay, and ask them whether or not they study and then divide them into the two groups based on their answer. That's, that's the same as what they did up here. So, that's still not random assignment. So, what I'd like you to do is pause the video try the next four on your own and come back and we will check our answers. All right, now that you've had a chance to go through these, let's take a look. So we're going to select a random sample of students from your school. So yes on our random sample. Ask them whether or not they study and divide them into the groups based on their answers. No, we still don't have random assignment there. Okay, now Get all of the students in your statistics class to participate. That's another one of those convenient samples. So we're going to say no here. Randomly assign. There we go. Randomly assign half. So we have random assignment. Good. Number five, 
select a random sample of seniors. So good, we've got random sampling. And then randomly assign, nice, we've got both of there. That's really what we want to be looking for. And then our last one is select a random sample of students from your school. That's a random selection. And then we have randomly assign, so we have random assignment. Okay, so let's see what does all of this mean. What can we can conclude about our results from this study? So we do not have random sampling and we do not have random uh, assignment. If we have random sampling, we cannot generalize to the population. If we don't have random assignment, we don't have any causation because we don't know that the results are because of the actual treatment. So what we can say here is for the students in this study, because we got a result, but we can only talk about the students in this study. So for the students in this study, okay, so for the students in this study, there is an association between whether or not listening to music while studying and GPA. And here's why. We do not have random sampling, so we can only talk about the students in the study, okay? We did not have random assignment, so we can only, we don't have any sort of causation here. We can only say there's some sort of association because it could be one of those confounding variables that's causing the results that we're getting, just sheer coincidence, okay? Let's try the second one. So the second one says select a random sample. So we had random sampling, but not random assignment. So random sampling says we can generalize to the population but we cannot determine cause and effect. So who would our population be here? We took a sample of seniors from the school. So your population would be the seniors at that school. And then we can only say there's an association because we did not have random assignment. All right, so all together we have for the seniors at this school, there is an association between whether or not students listen to music while studying and GPA. So we're able to make this statement for seniors at the school because we're the pop, we're talking about the population of seniors because we took a sample of seniors because we had a random sampling. And then we are able to say there's an association, but we can't say cause or effect because we did not have random assignment. So what I'd like you to do is try the next four on your own using the same idea and see how you do. Remember, if you happen to have causation, we found that the mean GPA of students who listen to music is significantly higher. So the GPA was higher for those who listen to music. So if you're talking causation, think about what that means. Pause the, uh, pause the video, come back when you're done. All right, well, let's see how you did. So for number three, we had random sampling. So we were able to say from the population, we can generalize to the population, which in this case is the students in the cool school. No random assignments. So there's only the association between whether or not they listen to music while uh, studying and GPA. Uh, number four, we did not have a random sample, so you can only talk about the people in the study. But we did have random assignment, and so therefore we can draw a causation that listening to music while studying causes GPA to increase because that's what we found in our study. Okay, in five, we had both random sampling and random assignment. So we we're able to generalize to the population, which the sample was taken from, which is the seniors in the school. And listening to music while studying causes the GPA to increase. And finally, six, we had two yeses again. So uh, we were able to say back to our population, which we took a random sample of students from the school. So their population is the school and listening to music while studying causes GPA to increase. Hopefully that made some sense. Um, let's do some summarizing on the back. All right. So what we were talking about in when we were making our conclusion is something called inference. Inference is when you're trying to infer the results of something back to a different group because we can't experiment on the larger group. So for our inference, we for a random sample, we need a random, random sample because that allows us to generalize to the whole population. So in the cases we we're looking at, the population was 
you know, a group of students such as all the seniors or a school because they didn't go outside of their school to get other people. They use their school as their population source, which is fine. And then random assignment, um, it allows us to make cause and effect conclusions because we've made our groups roughly equal. And, and I don't mean equal by numbers, remember, it's equal with variables. And it allows us to get a cause and effect conclusion. All right, so I made a chart to kind of help with this. So here's our, our chart for our visual people. So random selection is really random sampling and random assigning. So if you have random assign as sampling and random assignment, you can infer to the population and you can have cause and effect. So it's just a summary of what we were talking about. And um, that might help some people if they're super visual. And then all along um, in class, we've been watching the, the ethics videos. So really the ultimate takeaway, it's not really part of the uh, AP Stats curriculum, but if you're ever going to do research, you're going to run into this. Um, to have ethical research, you have to go through IRB, which is the Institutional Review Board, and they just go and make sure that your participants or subjects are going to be safe and come, no harm should come to them. Informed consent is the information that you give to your participants that tells them exactly what to expect in the study and um, possibilities of danger that they could run into. And of course, you would want to keep the participants confidential because uh, they're, you don't, they, there shouldn't be no identifying features of them in your research write-up. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video, try to check your understanding, read the scenarios and look for random selection and random assignment, and then answer the questions and we'll go over the answers in just a minute. All right, so when I read through about the athletes suffering a sports related concussion, um, they wanted to know if removing the athlete from play immediately helped with their recovery. So it says the researchers recruited 95 athletes seeking care for a sports related concussion. Okay, that is not random selection. Okay, because they came, they didn't just randomly select some people, they actually came to the clinic. So that's not a random selection. And researchers found um, statistically significant evidence that athletes who were removed from the play immediately recovered more quickly. So this is really more of an observational study because they didn't, you can't, you know, you have a concussion, you keep playing, you have a concussion, you go into our, our other group of we're going to remove you from the game. That's very unethical. You can't do that. So this is much more observational, but it also did not have randomly assigned because we cannot assign people to play with a concussion just to see what will happen. All right, so uh, what conclusions can we draw? We cannot make inference about the population or cause of an effect because um, we didn't randomly assign or randomly select. And no, it would not be ethical to conduct an experiment to, to check this out. All right, and then our second scenario, when you read through there, they this is a they looked at records okay and so there's no random selection necessarily here and um does the study show that eating nuts during pregnancy causes a reduced risk of nuts allergy no because there's no random assignments into group uh, you can't do that for ethical reasons you can't tell some people you can do this and others that you can't especially on a pregnant woman and um, because there's a you know you just don't know what that would mean for a baby and a baby certainly cannot give informed consent because ultimately they are the ones receiving the treatment all right hopefully that was help helpful if not let me know Talk to you later.